to pack orders this morning, packing and shipping. So coffee needs to go in the travel mug, which I forgot before I poured it. So now, yep, mess all over the place, but better a mess in the kitchen than a mess on the packing desk. Hey, Carrie, what you doing? <laughs> uh, losing my mind. <laughs> Carrie's working on the orders that we are sending over to the Stitch in London retreat over the big pond. Good luck, Carrie. <laughs> it's a good exercise in not knowing my whole thoughts. <laughs> Crazy. All right, it is. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. It's 4 p.m. Happy Wednesday, Floss Tube. My name is Caroline. Welcome back. It um, I had planned on recording a lot more various and sundry things today. However, uh, it just today was just one of those days. You know, there's. Um, my daughter Sarah was working down in Houston for uh, six weeks, just this past um, late August or through September. And, you know, as sometimes parents and kids, you know, keep in touch with funny things that they see on the internet. I'm, I'm notorious for, for doing that with, with the kids. There's a, a person I follow on Instagram, uh, Landon Talks, and he is so funny. He's so funny and so charming, and he has these, he talks about Southern expressions, and he sort of breaks them down and lets, you know, discuss these different expressions, and so I would, I would send the odd one to Sarah because she was down in Houston. I thought, you know, it might be good if she learned <laughs> some of the turns of phrases that, you know, so she would feel like she fit in. Um, and so according to Landon, today for me, I might could, I might could take to the bed. <laughs> I might could take to the bed because whew, I am, I am pooped. What a day. So, um, we were, we were all working downstairs today other than Matt was up here at the sewing machine. Um, we are working on some prototypes for a thread bed sort of project book style thing um, that we're going to hopefully have some available at the Modern Folk Embroidery Retreat and then bringing into the shop later in October, early November. Very excited about that. Um, I've been testing out a few at home using them and you know deciding exactly what I want in it and how I want it to look. Very simple, very basic, but very useful. So Matt's been working on that. Um, Hannah, Hannah's at school today and she was at school yesterday. So I took on um, the shipping of the countdown boxes this morning as well as some more floss club. So that was, uh, that kept me busy till about noon. Julie was working. I have to introduce you to Julie. I'm gonna introduce you to Julie on Friday um, because uh, I'm not doing a video tomorrow and not, Carrie and I are not doing a joint floss tube tomorrow either. So there will not be a floss tube video up tomorrow on the workshop channel, which is, uh, in case you didn't know, there's a, another YouTube channel called Evertote Notes from the Workshop that is actually, you know, supposed to be dedicated to the shop. But it feels like this month I've really kind of <laughs> taken you on a, on a well-guided tour through our workspace here. Um, it is, it's my life now. It's, I spend a lot of time here. I, I work very long hours. I love my job. I'm here all the time. So anything that's, uh, my job is, is very personal. So me sharing personal things with you, I'm here all the time. Uh, but Julie, Julie is, um, Julie's new here at the Evertote Workshop, but she is not new to me and my life. Julie and I have been very close friends since we were young girls. We've known each other. We met in grade seven. And um, I'll save the rest of the story until Friday uh, because she's, she's getting her hair cut tonight. So she didn't want to be on camera until, until she had her hair done. So we'll, uh, I'll introduce you to Julie on Friday. And I think you'll, 
I want I want you to know her because she's very special to me and now she's a big part of of Evertote uh, though she's not a stitcher believe it or not she is not a stitcher and I still really really like her <laughs> We won't hold it against her. And you know, the, the, the year is young, right? Maybe we'll turn her into a stitcher yet. You never know. Um, so Julie was working on packaging more envelopes for the countdown. Um, the, the math on those envelopes is, uh, you don't want to think about it too hard until you're, you're almost done. And we are almost done. We're, we're getting there. Um, we might have to push one day or, or two into October, but we are, we are in the final stretch and it's very exciting. It's really exciting to see um, those orders starting to go out the door. Many of you purchased this box way back in February when we first started talking about it and, uh, and started gathering supplies and working hard on this project. That's going to be taking place December 1st. So yeah, we are, we're getting close. So I'll introduce you to Julian on Friday. But yeah, we were, I was down there packing and shipping till about noon and Carrie was working on um, putting together a box of floss and orders for some, uh, Carrie's going to be at the Stitches in London retreat hosted by Marie of Stitches and Diamonds. Wonderfully fun retreat. Those of you who are lucky enough to be going, I am so jealous. I do not get to go this year. Uh, Carrie is, she's, she's, I think she's kind of crazy to be doing this. She's basically leaving the Sunday. She's walking out of the Modern Folk Embroidery Retreat here where you know we work together. So she's going to be working um, and you know, talking about floss all weekend. And then she's going to leave the retreat, drive to Toronto, get on an airplane and fly overseas. And she's gonna be at the Stitches in London Retreat. So I'm very, jealous but there was no way I, I I I could I just couldn't do it there's a lot of other stuff going on in my um, uh, my family through it where the next two months are very full of other family events happening Sarah's graduation Sarah's convocation um, is in late October and uh, John is going to be taking his dad overseas um, he's going to be staying with John's sister for um, over the winter. They live in a more moderate climate than we do here in southwestern Ontario. And it's only been the last few years that my father-in-law has had to spend a winter here. Um, for many years, he and my mother-in-law would, would, would travel overseas to a, a warmer climate. Um, but... Uh, my sister-in-law lives in a part of Italy that is sort of like Canadian spring in the winter. So it never really goes below five, six degrees Celsius. There's n hardly, like there's, it's very rare for them to get snow. They might get a little dusting, but it would melt very quickly. My father-in-law, it's very important for him to, to, to exercise. So he loves going on his daily walks. He needs like an hour and a half walk. He likes to go a couple of times a day. Um, and being, where we live, of course, um, sidewalks are covered in ice, you're trapped inside um, it's when it's really not safe, if you're maybe not all that steady on your feet 100% of the time. Um, my father-in-law also has a lot of trouble with his knee and his back and his hip, so he has to be really careful. And so it was really hard on him last year. So we're hopeful that he's going to have a much improved winter experience this year. Um, but he's, He's gotten to the point where he really shouldn't be traveling alone. So John is going to fly over to Italy with him and um, uh, and then come home after that. So so yeah, there's lots there's lots going on. Um, so should we talk a little bit about it? see I just I just needed to have a few minutes to chat with my friends. I feel better already. so thank you. Remember I said I was going to I was going to stitch that purple flower? Do you think I did it? I came so close, you guys. I came so close. Check it out. Almost. I almost finished that purple flower. I'm only missing, sorry, that's I have a I'm sitting in a squeaky chair. 
I only have a little bit more to do on this petal right there and then it's done. So I'll easily finish that up tonight. And um, I wanted to, there's another vine. I don't have the chart here with me. There's another vine that leads from this flower to another much smaller flower. And that's what I hope to accomplish tonight. I should also finish the letters that are here. To, oh, I did do that. I did do the letter M last night as well. So I finished that. So I should finish the letters and the vine and that flower. Now, as is usually the case, I always overestimate what I can accomplish, but I'm dreaming big. I'm going, going, I'm going big here because I only have a few days left. So I really want to finish it. And um, full disclosure, I stayed up really late last night. Disgustingly late. I know and I had and I woke up at what time did I wake up I didn't even I woke up before my alarm went off I woke up at 5 17 wide awake yeah I didn't go to sleep until 1 30 and you know what I actually slept pretty well um, I do find that if I make myself stay up late I actually sleep very very soundly so I'm probably getting a better quality sleep but I just couldn't help it it was and I I was um, I didn't have as much done, but when I got up this morning, it was it was still early, so I made my coffee and I went back to bed and I, I put in two more strands. So that's how my, my flower's almost done. Yeah, I stayed up super late. You know what? No regrets, it was really fun. I don't know if I'll do it again tonight, but I think I, re I reaped the benefit of the 8.30 bedtime the night before, so we'll see. I have one last giveaway today for the last Wednesday of Sampler September and I, ha I have a winner to announce first this is the this was the chart this is the model of the chart I was giving away last Wednesday this is Ellen Hooker by uh, this is a reproduction sampler by modern folk embroidery this model was uh, stitched on 36 count vintage flagstone. I just had a complete brain block. So, <laughs> okay. This, um, the model was stitched on 36 count vintage flagstone by Lakeside Linen. It was stitched by my friend Ellen of Maximum Cross Stitch. Um, she's done, she stitched a few models uh, for us here at the workshop. Um, 36 count vintage flagstone and she used Roxy Floss Co uh, chalkboard so that was the black floss she used so I have a chart and some floss to give away I pulled the winner already I think I had 128 comments and I actually know the winner I've met the winner before a few times Melissa Woodhead congratulations Melissa your comment came up from the YouTube random comment generator. Congratulations. I have your address. So we will get this out in the mail to you. Congratulations. I think you're going to love stitching this. So many things I want to stitch. I uh, honestly, I don't know if you saw, um, Ellen came to visit a few weekends ago and she started the artsy housewife golden delicious, which is, such a beautiful pattern and actually Shiloh X-Stitch MD just started it today as well with the Roxy Floss Co conversion. It's an amazingly, it's an amazingly beautiful chart. Um, and Ellen started that when she was at my house and where was I going with that? I can't remember where I was going with that. I will circle around eventually. I'm sure I can't remember. Nope. It's gone. Anyway, uh, congratulations, Melissa. We'll get your prize out to you. I, honestly, I can't remember where I was going with that. You can tell I'm starting to talk a little faster and I'm getting forgetful. So it's getting later in the day and I, I'm probably, I'm probably going to crash pretty hard in about an hour. So I showed you my progress. Now let's show you the final giveaway for Sampler September. I am going to be giving away, are you ready? One of my favorite new books from Teresa Vanette.
called Most Humble Hands. And this book is incredible. It is chock-a-block full of marking samplers. So just very simple, simple structure, simple, you know, um, young pupils learning their alphabet and their letters and their stitches, little simple motifs. Um, I'm, I'm working on, um, I'll show you on Friday in better detail the one that I'm working on, but the currently, where is it? Oh, there's just so many beauties in here. Gosh, I love this book so much. Here it is. I'm currently stitching EW 1850, a classic marking sampler. Um, I tend to repeat myself because you never know who's new around these pure parts to visit. And so I am stitching mine and there's part of the chart is on the other side. So I have to try to cover that up. See that version right there? See that? That's the original. See those colors there? Yeah. So mine is kind of something in between Teresa's charted version and the original. What a beauty. I mean, the artwork that she uses in the book, her writing in the book, her enthusiasm for her subject, Teresa Vanette, Kitten Stitcher. Um, I just, I really, really appreciate this book. It's a book that you can come back to again and again and again. So, um, I, I, a few months back before Stitch North, I brought both this one, which was her newest book, as well as the Red Sampler book, which I think she, she, um, put out last year, brought them into the shop. And so, yeah, I want to stitch them all. So not only is the winner going to be receiving a copy of this, you are also going to be receiving three months of the Roxy Floss Co. Floss Club. Yay! <laughs> your choice. Neutrals or the Brights Modern pack. Um, your choice. And it will start with the October pack, which is the pack that we are shipping right now. So if you are already a member of the Roxy Floss Co. Floss, uh, Floss, Floss of the Month, then you will have the next three months credited back to you. Um, so yeah, you guys, this, this month has been so fun. Um, you know, doing these daily videos, they are not the most popular videos I do. I, you know, most, okay, maybe not most, but the majority of stitchers who are looking for a floss tube video to watch, they want to see a, an hour to an hour and a half or many like shorter, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of just talking about the stitching. And I like those videos too, and I like doing those videos too. But these videos, these are kind of, these are really my jam where I just get to talk and I get to talk about all kinds of stuff and show you all kinds of stuff and talk about the things that I want to talk about whenever I want to talk about. And, um, you know, show you silly things like my dog snoring in the corner and, you know, tell you about my daughter being down in Houston and the funny things that we send each other. I it is it's a real pleasure to me and it has made the month of september a ton of fun reading your comments i know that i am absolutely terrible at hitting the heart button i've described it my my what's the expression you know i have a real problem hitting the heart button because it implies i have to leave a comment i need to leave a comment and i don't have time to leave a comment but i read them all i really just need to hit the heart button and, and you, you will know that I've appreciated the comment. It just somehow doesn't feel like enough. It doesn't feel like enough just to hit the heart button because we're having a conversation. So please know I read every single comment that you send me. I try to answer all the questions. Um, sometimes I answer you in my head <laughs> and then I forget to answer um, in the next video so if if I've if I've missed anything or you still have any other burning questions please ask me again and uh, hopefully you'll you won't mind that I didn't answer you properly the first time so leave me a comment below um, I will consider if you leave me a comment below that you would like to be entered in for the chance to win and I will choose a, a winner next week. 
Um, I will have a video up on Friday and I will not have a video up on Saturday. Saturday is September 30th, which is the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation in Canada. I will not be doing a video that day. I will be making my donation to the Indian Residential School Survivor Society. We, um, as we have for the last year and a half, we still have our Loon Toss bags available in the shop. Um, there is a $2.50 um, monetary donation attached to that to every bag sale of the Loon Toss fabric series um, that is collected and donated along with a top-up from me through Evertote to uh, the Indian Residential School Survivor Society on September 30th. My last donation was made uh, July 1st. I donated $200 on July 1st. I will be making another donation this Saturday. Um, I need to go in and look at the numbers, um, how many bags have sold since July 1st, and then I will be topping that number up, and I will um, I will post a screenshot of my donation here because I think it's really important that you know that that money is actually that I am actually doing that, um, and not just you know uh, trying to sell bags with with uh, it's it's a. Uh, yeah, anyways, just transparency, right? So I will post the photo of my donation. Um, I, I'm wondering about my next video. Uh, I suspect at this point it might be Monday. I know it will be October, but I think I will do a Sampler September wrap-up video on the, the first Monday in October. So I will have a video up on Friday because I'm hoping to have my Sampler September stuff almost done. And then I might give myself a day's grace and sneak in the first day of October if I really need it because um, I think I'm going to allow myself a little bit of forgiveness here for not finishing by the end of September because, well, we're supposed to, you know, have fun with this, right? Not, not get all upset about it. So, and I, I want that finish, both my sock and my September's Revenge. They're gonna be finished. So I'll have a video on Friday, I'll see you then, and then I'll have a video on Monday. So I will pull the winner on Monday, and that's how we will celebrate wrapping up Sampler September. So you don't actually have a full week. If you're watching this video late, um, today is September the 27th, and so you will have until Monday, October, it's the second, isn't it? October 2nd? Let's double check. Yes, Monday, October 2nd is the day that I will pull the winner. I will choose, I'll try to choose the winner in the afternoon so that you've got the morning to still enter the giveaway. This is a, this is a fun one. And I hope that, uh, I hope whoever receives it will love it and stitch every single sampler in this book. It's just like these things fill my, my daydreams, right? With all the plans and the, the colors and the fabrics and the, now I want to do this and I want to do this and there's just not enough time. Just not enough time. All right. I am, I'm on to uh, open air coffee now that I'm working upstairs here. So I'm going to get back to it. I have a few more emails to answer. Uh, Oh, if you are coming to the Modern Folk Embroidery Retreat, I, I know this is an aside and it's at the end, but don't worry, we're going to be announcing this in a few other different places. One of the things I was dealing with today was the parking situation at the RBC place, the convention center here in London. Um, parking around here is tricky. None of it is free. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's rather expensive. People staying at the hotel were offered... <clears throat> oh, I have a frog. People at the hotel have a $5 a day rate included in their, you know, they, they, but they still have to pay $5 a day for their parking. People who are, citrus who are driving in, um, the least expensive option we could find was to park at the convention center in their underground parking for $12 a day. Well, I found out today, um, and it's, I'm glad I found out before and not the day of the event when stitchers would try to go to lunch with their car because it is a once in once out $12 fee. It is not an all day fee that your ticket is punched and you're good for the day. No, it's a once in once out. So now I need to make sure that everybody who's parking there knows they're not even giving me free parking. <laughs> I'm hosting the event. I don't even get free parking. It's, it's been an afternoon, let me tell you. 
I might could take to the bed. <laughs> on that note, I will see you on Friday. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Happy stitching. Mm -hmm.